Hello. Hi. I hope you are doing great. Uh, I am excited. The spring is coming, I think. I don't know. We never know. Uh, this has been one of the harshest winters I can remember. Because while I was in Minnesota, that was okay. It was the normal thing. But this year, the polar vortex, the atmospheric rivers, all those things, it's crazy. And there is nothing better for a winter day when it's rainy or snowy. And there are so many people who are buried in the snow, poor things. So there is nothing better than a good stew. And you know, I sometimes show you what I eat. Sometimes I give you simple recipes, but I have never made a video about one recipe. That is not what the channel is all about. But this one was a happy accident times two. And I will tell you why. Uh, so I needed to share this because for those of you who cook, you know how beautiful cooking is, how relaxing, how fantastic it feels. And for those of you who don't cook, you know how stressful and frustrating it is not being able to boil water. So I wanted to share this because of several different reasons. I mean, I loved the thing I created, so I want to share it with you. But I also believe I am a good cook, but what I love cooking is stews. And the reason for that is throughout the world, the best meals or the best foods you can have are stews. In Spain, that glorious, delicious mix of rice and and shrimp and fish and veggies called paella it has is famous all around the world, but it's nothing but but it's too. Um, what else in Brazil? The the number one dish is feijoada, which is a black bean stew, and it's mind blowing. It's so delicious. There are so many examples like this all over the world. The best dishes are stews. Now, when you're a nomad, you don't have the possibility of cooking elaborated recipes. And so a stew is still one of the best tools you can have to enjoy a fantastic meal. So let me tell you what I did. And a little twist, I gave it at the end, because you will love it. Let's go. So if I have to give it a name, I would call it Desert Sausage Stew, something like that. Because I bought uh, sausages, um, the mild ones, and I cut them in slices, in, in little wheels, as big or as small as you want. I got some grass-fed ground beef, because being keto, those are my staples. And I chopped one onion, two bell peppers. I added a green one and a red one, I think, or something like that, just for fun. The colors uh, always help. And usually I caram caramelize the onion and the peppers first, and then I add sweet paprika. I love it. But I didn't have the time or the capacity with my little burner to take all those extra steps. So I put the onions, the peppers, the sausages, and the meat all together in the same pan. I covered it so the juices of the veggies 
came out and cooked the meat and I just eyeballed it. Um, probably it was after it started to boil, it was six, seven, eight minutes or so. Everything was boiling well. The sausage was not cut too big, so everything got cooked. I just wanted to make sure the meats were cooked. And then I added five uh, Roma tomatoes cut in wheels. And uh, I just put them on top and I added salt. Uh, the herbs I used was Italian herbs uh, bay leaves and uh, apart from the sweet paprika that's it nothing else you can add whatever you want the sausages I got they have fennel which I don't like for some other recipes but for this one it was perfect so I put the tomatoes the salt the herbs on top covered it with the lid let it boil for another five minutes or less and that's it that's it so at that point the stew was ready and delicious because all those flavors came together usually the key to a good stew is to allow for those things to cook for a little longer so all the flavors mix very well but since I was using fresh tomatoes and fresh uh, veggies, I mean the onion, the peppers, everything was going to contribute with a lot of um, aromas and good flavors. So I didn't need to overcook it. Sometimes you can go for a little less. But so far with all the juices from the tomato and everything, uh, it was almost like a soup, like a very thick soup. Usually I like to add cubed sweet potatoes or cubed potatoes. I prefer sweet potatoes because then you have a little bit more of the chew with the potatoes and uh, it makes it perfect. But that is not keto. Sweet potatoes are not keto. Potatoes are not keto. And I still wanted the chew. The other alternative for a good stew, to go with a good stew, is always rice, right? White rice or brown rice or whatever rice you prefer. If you have tried good Indian food, those pieces of lamb or any other beef or whatever, in those rich sauces they come with, White rice is the perfect mate for those because it absorbs all those juices and it's glory. Fantastic. So I thought, I cannot have rice because it, it is not keto. So I created keto rice. And this is the second part of the recipe. So I had an Anaheim pepper. You can use ghost pepper. You can use any kind of hot pepper you like. I like it very soft. So I used an Anaheim pepper. It was a little lost, but it's still very flavorful. So I cut it in wheels and I saute the, the pepper a little bit. And then I added a little box of sliced mushrooms. Now, don't wash them. I don't wash them because I don't want to use water. And honest to God, the little bit of whatever is good for your gut. So it's okay. You're not going to die out of that. But if you wash the, the mushrooms, they absorb a lot of water and then your dish is watery. So do not wash the mushrooms. I just added a small box of sliced mushrooms to the Anaheim pepper in olive oil. And when the mushrooms were golden, I added a packet of riced cauliflower. 
not broccoli, not the green one, the white one, riced cauliflower. I put it there with a little bit of salt on top, just a couple of minutes, because you don't want the cauliflower to lose the crunch. So if you cook it too much, it becomes mushy. So you don't want that. You want the cauliflower to be crunchy. So it was so delicious. I served this too with that keto rice made uh, out of cauliflower, mushrooms, and, and pepper. The combination of flavors was glorious. So I am thinking of my friend Deb. I hope she takes a few minutes to cook this. It's easy enough. I am thinking of so many people who may want to replicate these recipes. Two recipes for one meal. That keto rice is amazing. It is now my new thing. Every day I will have a bowl of that. The good thing is it took the test of the fridge. You know, sometimes you put something in the fridge and the following day it's mushy, it's not nice. It was crunchy, it was perfect. So from now on, do not miss the rice. If if you cannot eat rice and you, you crave it, go for keto rice. It's amazing. <laughs> you can always add uh, a caramelized onion in the beginning. You can always add garlic. Uh, think of all the, the condiments or herbs you like and add them. They are fantastic. The key is not to overcook the cauliflower. It will, it will smell nasty when you first open the bag and put it there, but that smell goes away immediately and the result is amazing. I hope you love these two recipes that go hand in hand together perfect. And please let me know if you try them and please let me know what is to you know that you make. So tell me what your favorite stew is and if you like stews. And talking about liking, if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new. We don't discuss food all the time. This was an accident, but it was a happy accident. And uh, please share the video with someone who doesn't know how to cook because you cannot make anything easier than this. And it's a winner. So thank you very much for being here. Have a great day. Take care. <music>